you had painter's block. Uh -huh. A lot of times the reason why artists have that is because they're not thinking properly. And what I mean by that is they're often thinking too much in the nouns and they're thinking about the subject and what should I paint, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, uh -huh. And they're thinking too visually. And before uh -huh. you think visually, you kind of have to uh, go through a different process. Uh -huh. um, and so you kind of have to leave the earth for a moment, go inside yourself and explore. And, uh, and then when you do that, all of a sudden you get all this inspiration um, and, and, and you can have it on demand, you know, if, yeah. you, if you know how to do that. And so that's what um, at my academy, we call it story. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the first thing that we go through. And it's the most important part because every color you mix, every value that you uh, plan, every uh, line that you make mm -hmm. has to support the purpose of the painting. All right. Right. And if it doesn't, then you shouldn't be doing it. Okay. Okay. So for example, if you wanted to, uh, what's a, where's a place that you like to travel to? Um, mountains. Okay. So if, if you get in your car mm -hmm. and you just feel the, um, the drive, right? Oh, I just want to turn here. And, you know, I feel like turning there and I really love turning right. So I'm only going to turn right. Mm -hmm. Most likely you'll never get to the mountains. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> right. So knowing that the destination is the mountains, will mm -hmm. will uh, affect every decision that you make mm -hmm. right from the way that you dress what you bring with you um how much gas you gotta have all kinds of all these different decisions right and so that's the same uh with making art if you don't know um what you want the end viewer to experience mm -hmm. then you're kind of just shooting in the dark and hoping yeah. you get there <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be a hope. You can actually, you know, be very deliberate about what, what experience you want to give uh, to the person who looks at your artwork. And so we, we start with uh, this idea called story. And so um, one of the things that we always say is message over medium. So it doesn't okay. matter, you know, the, the medium is very important, but if the message isn't clear, then you'll have a pretty work of art, but people won't really get it, right? All right. They like it, but they won't, it won't, they won't feel it because it wasn't designed for them to feel. Yeah. So that's what uh, this process goes through. So okay. um, when I do this, I always encourage people to work on five images at a time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then what, by, when they're done with that, it gives them this nice little collection of work. Um, and so here's the overview of kind of the questions that we're going to go through. Um, okay. So you want to think about one collection. You're going to have yeah. five concepts and in each concept, you're going to have what we call a change of charge. Okay. So two changes of charge. And then, uh, you'll have at the end of that process, a conclusion. Okay. Okay. And the, the, the process we're going to walk through is what we call the, the exploring, examining, and expression. So the first part is we have to explore some ideas, okay? And mm -hmm. so, uh, and this, if you're going through this process, know thyself, because all your ideas are going to come from within, okay? So in one or two words, what's an idea you desire to explore? It can be anything. Um, What's something that's important to you? And, uh, and, and, and my and, faith. What was that? My faith. Your faith. Okay, faith. Yeah, my faith is really a big thing to me. It actually consumes my head. I see, I've got a whole lot of images stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's connected to my faith. Mm -hmm. um, um, like um, I've, I've got these images from hands coming out water. Um, I've got lions. I've got eagles. I've got um, mountains. I've got 
big clouds. I've got, I've got lots of stuff that, that, that connects to my faith though. Mm -hmm. So that, that this, that at, that at this stage, it's a big thing within me and within mm -hmm. my head though. But I don't always know how to get it from my head onto the canvas or from my head onto paper. And that's what we're going to do today. Okay. So um, everything you gave me, hands, lion, eagles, water, those are all nouns. Okay? okay. And so the brain feels something. You're, when, you, when you feel something, your brain is going to use its imagination, right? It's going to create images, to associate with those feelings. All right. So your faith has absolutely nothing to do with hands, lions, eagles, and water, or mountains, mm -hmm. right? All and, right. but what do those things, what's, what is the, the, I want to say the verb or the feeling or the energy behind those things? What's the oh, spirit God, behind those? Thing. Yeah, strength. Um, so, for example, uh, when you think of the hands, right? So, actually, what's beautiful is we already have five images, right? We have the hands, lion, eagle, water, and mountain. You said water, correct? Uh, well, water is there. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, I've got a whole lot. But I do get what you say. Um, the verb behind it. Yeah. And, Freedom. And, and, oh, that's interesting. Okay. So... So what we're going to stay on is faith, okay? That's that's going to be your your faith, and right. let's come up with one clearer concept because faith is huge, right? Yeah. Um, and so, what is the overall feeling that you get when you're walking in your faith? I think freedom. Okay, freedom it is. So freedom will be the idea that we're exploring. Okay. Okay. And uh, now once we have that, now we want to break it up into five concepts or five paintings, ultimately. Okay. And okay. so now we want to explore those a little bit deeper. Okay. And so that we can call these aspects. So what are five aspects of freedom? Okay. okay. Um, and so I'm going to write this down as you answer those questions. Now, since you already have these five uh, wor uh, nouns, hands, uh, lion, eagle, water, and um, mountain, uh -huh. let's explore that imagery and extract from it what about it enhances or supports or um, exudes freedom. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, for example, let's look at the word lion. Okay. We'll say that's the first concept, the lion. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we don't want to think about the lion. But what is it really that you're feeling when you imagine the lion that, uh, that enhances this or, or um, makes that you enhances experience the image of, Yeah. The, the power, the strength. Power. Okay. Cool. Power. Strength. Okay. And hands, when you imagine hands, what is it really that you're feeling or tapping into? Um, uh, how do you say it? Um, gratitude. Oh, wow. Okay. Beautiful. Um, the eagle. Um, I think the eagle, um, definitely the eagle comes in with freedom um, mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to put it into one word, but taking me away from hustle and bustle, you know, that, that feeling of freedom in the air, not, mm -hmm. not constricted to, to people and surroundings. And, um, so yeah, I'd say, I'd say that is the freedom part. So you feel like you're above, above the chaos, above the chaos, taking me out the chaos. That's gorgeous. Uh, water? The water abundance. Mm. And the mountain. And? 
the mountain wholeness, um, the um, th that feeling of forever. Um, yeah. It's just always there. <laughs> nice. The ever present. Yeah. Beautiful. How are you feeling right now going through those those five ideas? Very excited. Right? <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> <clears throat> See, this is the thing. Um, the word to be inspired comes right. from the word to meaning to be in spirit. Okay. Okay. And so we have spirit, which is really verb. Okay. Mm. And then we have nouns. So, for example, one of the issues that people get into is when they say, well, uh, they're seeking love, right? They often yeah. think of love as a noun. It's something that needs to be acquired. It's something that they have to uh, be given, right? That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, or, you know, that they're looking for. But it's a verb. It's an action, right? Yeah. And, um, and, and so once you shift your mind from love being th this tangible thing that you're seeking – to this energy, this passion, this um, uh, this this thing that you give, right? Mm -hmm. um, it 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 empowers you, right? And mm -hmm. and and then you find freedom in that because you can live that out because you're not yeah. you, if you're looking for it, then what you're really saying to yourself is you don't have it. They try, right? right? So. Okay. So as the artist, we have to be very careful, especially as image makers. We need time where we separate ourselves from imagery and mm. get back to to be inspired or into the spirit or the verb or the energy of that feeling yeah, that, that makes totally sense and um and when you do that uh when you feel a block coming on it's just mm. your spirit saying hey, hey 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 come spend some time with me mm. you know and then oh, just a, okay. and giving yourself that space you know Go, yeah. go spend time um cool so now the next step is what we call a change of charge okay so um a great american illustrator norman rockwell mm -hmm. wrote in his book that one of the keys to his success was the fact that he could uh make you feel in one image two different feelings two different emotions Mm -hmm. Okay, so it wasn't good enough just to um, do one image, but he had, a, or, you, know, you know, one idea, he had to put two. And the reason why <coughs> was because it allowed you to move from one state of consciousness or awareness into another. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, that transition, that shift, it, it unlocks an experience in you. Mm -hmm. And now the artwork becomes alive. It's not just some frozen uh, representation of, uh, of something, some noun that you see. It mm -hmm. actually becomes alive. It becomes this trans, you know, this, uh, this experience that you have. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the lion, which you said was power and strength. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we want to juxtapose a second concept with it, something that either um is the opposite of it or or different but supporting it okay? okay so that we can feel uh this this difference and it's kind of like putting black next to white right uh, when right. you do that the black gets blacker and the white gets whiter right so there's this mm -hmm. simultaneous contrast so to really make us feel power and to feel mm -hmm. strength we need something else um to have that contrast. And so when you're thinking of power and strength in relationship to freedom, what, uh -huh. what, what, what could, what concept could we put in there in one or two words um, that would be that change of charge? You know, why don't we start with the Eagle because that's probably much easier since you already gave okay. this earlier okay so right. in the eagle you said that you want to be above right the chaos yeah 
So in this case, that is very, very clear. You can almost see um, in a painting, the top part almost having nothing in it except one little mark, yeah. you know, and you feel something soaring above. It's in this moment of calm and peace. And then mm. in the bottom, you whatever it is that you paint down there, it would be very, very textured, very, very high contrast, you know, lots of um, alternating diagonals in there because as you're, as you're going through it, the eye is kind of pushing through and it's chaotic. It's, um, it's tense. There's tension in there. There's lots of friction through the values. Does that make sense? I can actually see the image in my head now, y'all. Yeah. You might even <laughs> use, you might even use, um, uh, yellow greens and yellows and oranges mm -hmm. down in, the, in that mm -hmm. bottom part and then this beautiful just quiet blue yeah, yeah. You see? so now you have this shift right this this juxtaposition um, right. and you really feel this sense of soaring above the chaos right yeah. so so that would be you know um, what we could do for the eagle one the eagle painting and again, it might not even be an eagle. It might be something else totally. Yeah. But, but as long as you get those feelings in there. Right. So, so let's go back to the line. What would be for power and strength? What, what would you want to juxtapose it against? Um, I, would, I would actually have the lion um, be protective of something... Um, uh not his cub though maybe um, no 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 don't think nouns no maybe um so so in this case if you think of a lion let's say a mother lion using her power and her strength I'm to protect this huh i'm actually thinking of a male lion okay a male lion um yeah. protecting the uh, cub although they, um, tend to, and t they tend to eat the cubs but anyway um <laughs> Um, maybe, um, I don't know, I was, I was actually thinking of the lion and the lamb. Okay, okay. So, so again, even with that, the, the lion cub or the lamb, you're really saying the same thing. So, what you're, what it sounds like is the, 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 uh, the adult, the mature, the strong, the powerful, is using that power to what? For this weaker... Innocent. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the power is to protect this innocent um, innocence. It's really what yeah. it is, right? Yeah. And so, so, so the, we would say protect, and then what is it protecting? Innocence. You know, now you could do 300 paintings on power protecting innocence yeah right it could be using a lion with a, a cub it could be a lion and a lamb it could be a mother and a child it could be birds it could it could be anything it could be an abstraction right mm -hmm. um you could almost see in an abstraction um blacks and reds um mm -hmm. with beautiful maybe um uh, turquoise or something in there, right? To, to say, to get this sense of righteousness almost swirling in this circle. And in the midst of it, it's just this very calm, light, low, you know, yeah. yellows and um, whites inside there. And you just feel that it's protecting, it's not harming, it's protecting this, this quiet, innocent, unblemished soul, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, okay. So power and, um, innocence and and in this case it's protecting it okay mm -hmm. so when you say you feel the hands and the hands mean gratitude you see the hands but they but the feeling you want us to experience is gratitude what yeah. can you juxtapose with that what can you what can what, what other concept can you add that will add i was actually um the I actually saw these hands coming out of water, receiving something. Um, okay. Also, the, the water is the water. Um, to me, I see the water um, fairly stormy. Um, but also, then 
where I receive it from is very tranquil. Okay, so the, okay, got you. So again, you're saying that the hands are coming out of this um, stormy water, right? Yeah. This agitated, um, we might even use the word chaotic again, yeah. um, water. The hands are coming out of that. And then what it's receiving is water, but it's a calm water. Is that what you're saying? No, no um, it's receiving something. I'm not too sure what it is receiving. Gotcha. Um, uh, I don't have that image yet, but it's receiving what whatever um, from a very tranquil space. So maybe the the again, like maybe as we spoke about the eagle, the mm -hmm. top part also very quiet, calm, mm -hmm. and whereas the bottom is very stormy. Exactly. Yep. And what it may be receiving may be just the presence of that tranquilness, right? Maybe yeah. So there's a beautiful um, uh, painting by Caravaggio called uh, Caravaggio. And um, uh, it, it's um, the conversion of St. Paul. Okay. And so they have Paul, he's laying on the ground and there's a horse there. And, um, and what's really neat is on his chest and his arms, you, you feel, you see the, this light, this external light that's yeah. on him right uh -huh. but the way his arms are up in the air and the the way the horse's leg is and all that stuff you you feel the presence of a sphere right, right. And, and it's it's a heavy sphere okay there's nothing there but because right. of the design you your brain fills in the gaps and it feels this yeah, yeah. ball right and from yeah. the center of the ball is the light source all right. Right. And so um, it's, it's this moment in which like, you know, the presence of God just comes and sits on Paul. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right. How wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, how do you design this invisible thing and actually make us literally feel it and yeah. see its presence. Um, and uh, it, it's very, it's very cool. So I'm kind of seeing something very similar, similar to All that right. for that painting. Um, okay. Um, so it's going from, so really what you're looking at is uh, gratitude might be an idea, but you're really looking at um, receiving, we're going to use the word peace. Okay. All right. Um, just because I can spell that tranquil is a little harder for me. Um <laughs> Uh, so what we can say is uh, from trouble to peace. Yeah. And, and, you, and you move from that, from one place to the other through gratitude. Mm -hmm. You see how profound these get when you're not focused on the object, yeah, but the spirit behind it? Yeah. I think it actually is a mm -hmm. quite a portrayal of my life um myself from coming from from terrible stages when I was younger mm. and um and being transformed. Yeah. And and this is why when you do a painting, um it's it's a self portrait, especially when you get into yeah. you start asking questions like, why am I painting this painting? Yeah. You know. And, and all of a sudden you, you have this deeper connection and you're painting it from a very deep emotional place, something that's mm. raw and real for you. And mm. therefore, when you, when you create work from that place, it has a far better chance of being real and raw to somebody else. Yeah, true. Right? Because the, 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 they'll see on that emotional level, um, they'll feel the painting. They'll feel the mm. contrast between this trouble and this place of peace and this transition between Well, the first time I think a penny actually dropped. <laughs> what was that? I, I say for the first time, I actually feel a penny dropping. I can actually, um, you actually, in the short time space, you've already helped me to see much further. That's cool. I've never heard anyone use that phrase before. I can see a penny yeah. drop. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> This is Africa. 
That's awesome. <laughs> Love it. Um, so when when we said water before, that's what it was. Uh, I, I misread you. Um, you were saying that you saw hands coming from the water. I thought there were two water, different images. Yeah. Yeah. But in this, you said that um, if we look at the image number four, you said that that was water going into abundance, right? <clears throat> yeah. Or that that was the spirit was was abundant. So let me ask you, what does that water look like real quick? Is that an ocean? Is that a waterfall? Is it rain? Is it like what? It's ocean. Oh, an ocean. Yeah. So I'm going to take away water and replace it with ocean. Okay. Okay. So if the ocean is abundance for you, it's mm -hmm. vast, it's deep, it goes as far as the eye can see in front of it to the side. If you're in the middle of it, everywhere you look, it's present. Okay. And it's, you can't, you don't even know how far the thing goes deep. So it is abundance. There's no, no shortage of it. Yeah. Um, then what would be the juxtaposition of that? <sighs> to God, I don't know if this is to me. Mm -hmm. I see myself as very small mm -hmm. in this vast, vast, vast ocean. Yeah. Um, and, and, and anyone who's listening to this, 99% of the people when you just said that was like, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. Okay. So if you design your artwork from that truth, all right, it doesn't matter if it's a little worm on a grass you know, in the grass yeah. or a, a forest and you see one little bird or yeah. it's an ocean with one person floating in it yeah. or the nighttime sky with one star. Yeah. Right. It's this juxtaposition that triggers within us yes. the, vastness vast, of it. the vastness of it mm -hmm. and that we are but a speck in it. Yes. Now, um, I know your your faith is in in you know is in Christ, and so I always it's it's very strange because throughout my life people would always say you know go stand in front of the ocean and you'll feel how small you are. I and, know, right? Okay. And strangely, I've never got that. When I stand okay. in, in front of the ocean, I feel so much bigger. All right. Because no matter how vast the ocean is, mm -hmm. the spirit that lives within me is bigger than it. Amen. Right? And so it's, it's, it's weird, <laughs> but it's like it, no matter how powerful anything is or how big it is or how beautiful it is, no matter what it is, the spirit that lives in me, one yeah. created all of that and therefore it is more beautiful greater deeper vaster than anything that yeah. we can see um so so abundance if something is abundant that which are juxtaposing is what's that word that we're looking for you remember i'm african speaking <laughs> That's fine. Speak it in Afrikaans. Uh, can you actually, can you speak Afrikaans? No, but I can hear it. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, um, my favorite book um, is called The Power of One. Oh. And uh, it's, it takes place in uh, South Africa. And... Uh, in essence, the book is about understanding that the power of a waterfall starts with a single drop at the top of a mountain. Yeah. And, um, and that's really what we're looking at, right? It's like you are this one little speck, this one droplet, and yet your contribution is what makes that water pull that waterfall exist you know um oh, that is beautiful oh, okay 
So I guess really with this, what I would encourage you to explore Mm. is this relationship between the big and the small, but in doing it, somehow making the small more powerful than the big. All right. Right. So if you think of the nighttime sky, it's, it's, it's black, it's dark, it's, it's huge, it's vast. And yet, if you put a white star in it, what is it that we see? All right. Right? Uh, um, and it's that little tiny insignificant speck, which is what we actually see. All right. Okay, so say, for instance, mm -hmm. I've got, say, for instance, a, uh, say it's a, it's a nighttime sky, a vast um, ocean. Um, I've got it at nighttime. I've got this one person, small, standing on the side, but shining a light mm -hmm. over this vast ocean. Oh, I like that. I like that. You know, like lighting up. Yeah, that the uh, person becomes the lighthouse. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Now, do they see anything in that light? They see direction. Cool. I like yeah, that a lot. Fine. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking now direction um, one, one person light cool geez i've been scribbling on this paper so much now <laughs> <laughs> we got one more to go through one more to go through right. now you you we, we looked at the word mountain yeah. And you said wholeness. It's mm -hmm. forever. It's ever present. Mm -hmm. And so in that, what can we juxtapose it against it? Um, the around the mountain, the, the mountain will always the mountain will stay. Um even though it becomes winter, it becomes summer, um, the plants will die, the flowers will grow, but yet the mountain stays. Mm. It never changes. Okay, so... so it, it's um, steadfast. Um, steadfast. And so what we're juxtaposing around it is... I have words, but I want them to come from you. Um, so if, if one object or one thing in your image is immovable, unchangeable, then what are we, what's, what's dancing around that thing? Um... Don't think of the noun. Stay, stay with the verb. So I, 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 I just use the word dance, right? Um, that, that could be one, right? You could have trees that move and they look like they're dancing in front of the stillness of this mountain, right? You could have clouds moving, you know, you, you, the way you draw them and design them, you can yeah. feel the sense of them moving, right? And rolling. Um, and yet when your eyes go over the part of the image at the mountain, the way you design and construct it, it, it doesn't move, right? You might use a lot of so verticals, horizontals. Depending on where the light crumb comes from, where the shadow falls. Mm -hmm. um, where's your light? Um, depending on where your light is, your shadow will always be on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, um, if I don't have my light on, my shadow will fall on the opposite side. 
Um, okay. But also, but as seasons come and go, there's changes. There's changes in our life every single day. But some things are just steadfast. It just stays the same. Um, but how do I get that on the canvas? <laughs> Well, it's funny. I, I just drew this little picture. I'll, I'll do it. Um, I'll do it here. I'll draw it up here for you. Um, depends on your style. Um, if this works for you, but what I what I just sketched out was you have a mountain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the thought is that um, you have a shadow because the the sun's here. You mm -hmm. would have your shadow that's pointed here, right? Uh -huh. But then, if the shadow is here, here, it will come like so. Uh -huh. And then if the shadow is here, I mean the sun is here, then it would come like here. And so what's uh -huh. cool is if you had something like this, where you had this mountain and you had these different shadows somehow so that as your eye went through the image, it would feel this shadow, feel that shadow, feel that shadow, I, uh, feel it moving. Wow. You know? Yeah, true. Now, maybe you would have the mountain and this would be water, right? Let's say. And so that way you can play just with values where you almost feel you're not sure. Is that the reflection or just the, the darkness? Because, you know, water got right. different you know okay so that's one way you can hide it if you need more of a quote-unquote realistic looking mm. picture mm. if you're more of an abstractist then it doesn't matter you can just have fun with that right yeah um and uh but this way as your eye moves through it's feeling the sense of time shifting the environment mm -hmm. moving shadows are moving um you know you might even have trees that are moving up like this, coming down like this, coming up like this, coming down like this. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe like a little forest back there or something. Yeah. But again, um, but this doesn't move. You can draw yeah. clouds in the in the sky that, as your eye moves, mm -hmm. they go up and down. You know. But again, this doesn't move. This. Okay. <clears throat> oh wow! Yes. Sure. Let me go back here. Okay, cool. You know, you know that my head is spinning right now. Yeah, <laughs> it should be. <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody's looking, you know, looking all over the place for great ideas, and they don't realize like you're 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 an uh, endless well full of them. I mean, uh, you know. Yeah, but if nobody teaches you this, if nobody. And how do you, how do you know? Sometimes you just need somebody to jog you a bit, you know, mm -hmm. like a glow stick. Like a glow just, stick. Just, yeah, shake you and snap you until the light comes on. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm a glow stick. <laughs> that you are, that you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you shake you and then so the light comes on wow i love that so much i'm still gonna use that so, so now you know so so what you're looking at is steadfast but then you're looking at um you know seasons changing mm -hmm. um really what you're looking at is change movement is what you're really looking for right okay. It's in that, you know, what now what what's moving? That's a different story, right? You could do a yeah. hundred paintings on the relationship between something that's steadfast and moving. Yeah. You know, God is outside of time. He's yeah. ever present. There is no future and there is no past in him, right? It's just ever yeah. present. Yet the realm in which we live in, you know, in the universe, there's time. And, yeah. you know, things move through it and and um uh and so and there's space and then there's matter and all these d different uh -huh. types of constraints that we have to manage 
I once heard um, someone say that the reason why humans are so frustrated, such a frustrated creature, is because uh-huh. we're eternal being beings that live in time. <gasps> that's so true. Oh, that's beautiful. Right? Yeah. And and um, it's it's funny, you know, uh, mm-hmm. talking with men, you know, like um, when a man he'll meet a woman, uh-huh. and within the first like five to 10 seconds, he'll know if he wants to marry her and spend the rest of his life with her. All right. And, um, or at least pursue the, uh, pursue the that, right? Yeah. Like he'll, he'll know. He'll uh, know. He, he will know within seconds of meeting her. Um, he will also know if she's not, and then he'll make the, then he makes the choices if he wants to play a game. Mm-hmm. or 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 let that go right um yeah. and so within seconds he knows the problem is he can see the end from the beginning immediately but if he begins to speak to her from that with that level from that perspective he comes off as a creep right yeah <laughs> oh my god i see my children in your eyes and it's like oh, i don't even know your name and all, all you will see is the soles of her shoes with her running. <laughs> exactly. And so that gets frustrating for men because it's like we have to wait months for y'all to come along and realize that which we knew seconds in, in, in the beginning, right? Uh-huh. But we have to play this, we have to have this dance, this courting dance, right? Uh-huh. And um, and so it, it's like I always say it's kind of like men we look at we're standing on a mountain and we see three mountains right and yeah. we're looking straight at them the problem is is we see them all in the same plane where women it's like they're standing on you know in the plane looking up at the three mountains and they see the distance they see the valleys the, you know yeah. it takes time to go from one peak to the next to the next where men are just like i see three peaks you know <laughs> <laughs> And I think inside the individual, we have that, right? It's like we see yeah. this, we, 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 we sense this eternal presence. And yet it's frustrating because we have to deal with, you know, oh, these things don't, you know, it takes time, you know, we have to manage the resources. We have to do these things, you know. Yeah. And so, um, uh, <clears throat> but acknowledging that we're both, is really the key to to succeeding uh, as the artist that though ultimately we are producing something that's physical and tangible an artifact the truth is is that thing is just um what we're doing is going through the incarnation process right Mm -hmm. we we get in touch with the spirit or the muse that that invisible Mm -hmm. thing that stimulates and animates ideas feelings and thoughts Mm -hmm. and then we go through this process of in bedding or or embodying that that spirit giving it a body you know that's why we call it a a body of work right or art is Mm -hmm. a body of work it's a body for these ideas and but you have to start in that place of idea and so um that's what we we call the story um one last part to this uh let's see here first of all um let me just show you this example there are two newman rockwell paintings and if you look at them both you can see at the top i'm going to draw on here real quick this idea of, of change of charge so this boy here he's kind of like that mountain that we were talking about um you know, very, very, very made of lots of horizontal, very symmetrical, right? Yeah. Boom. But then if we look at the people up here, they are just these rolling, laughing, ah, screaming oh. energies, right? Um, and, and they're diagonals. And, and so there's all this chaos. And then in the midst of it is, is, is him, you know, focused or scared or what, you know? And yeah. so, so knowing this, Norman does it again in this other painting where he has this teacher who is the pillar of the room, okay? Yeah. Now, in the midst, you can see where she writes four times 63, you know, times five, yeah. five times. You know, but the children write 
all this diagonal chaotic lang you know um words yeah. you know they're scribbling on the wall uh, on the thing happy birthday and so yeah. even though you don't see the children um in the chalkboard you feel the presence of the children this young enthusiastic almost yeah. chaotic you know uh in enthusiasm next yeah. to all of the order of the of the adult and the teacher and so it's this change of charge that he's constantly playing with so that you feel this relationship it's between amazing it's neat um okay so once we have that then and this is kind of what we already were going through then you want to in one or two sentences express the synergy you want us to get in your final work of art um now at this point we've never talked about what the objects are that you're actually painting but at this stage now, I think it could be any object. It can be, that's the secret. It can be anything. I just realized it does not have to be the lion, the hand, the mountain, the eagle. Exactly. And it's better that I it's was, not. Yes. Which I was very stuck on. Mm -hmm. And you know, it really feels like a whole world is opening because it can really be anything. That, that's, that's the beauty of it. And so, um, so what you would want to do at this point is, is write out in one or two sentences, what is the relationship, you know? So you might say um, something along the lines of the power and the strength protecting the innocent. Yeah. Now what you have is also, if you edit it a little, you have an incredible title for a painting yeah right oh my husband's gonna tell me i'm in another world tonight <laughs> <laughs> just invite him into it and he'll be like stay in there as long as you want he really uh, tries to understand sometimes but <laughs> yeah I've, I've only got a right brain and he's only got a left brain <laughs> <laughs> but i'll tell you um if he being that he's left brain if he went through the if he watched his video he would yeah. appreciate it because it's a very logical process. Yeah, it is. You know, we give it the structure so that we can then dance in the right brain, right? But we have this left brain logical structure framework so that we can be free. Um, and, and um, but yeah. And so here, so in terms of expression, so that's what you want to do. And the reason why you want to do that is this. Um, one of the things I love about teaching artists is that at the end, when they go through this process and they stick to this, so every yeah. decision that they make through their painting process, um, as they make their artwork, every decision has to come back. Does this color, does this movement, does this decision that I'm making support the idea that the strength is protecting the innocent? Yeah. If it doesn't, it, then it does not belong in the painting. Yeah. Okay, if I'm writing a book about uh, the Renaissance, mm -hmm. I can't put in there an airplane. True. Yeah. It it doesn't fit, right? Mm -hmm. And so you you so you have to stay true to the spirit in which you speak, right? And um, and and people, you know, I was watching this guy the other day. He was talking about this um this economic stuff and and he and he said you know i really encourage people to buy real estate you know gold and silver and museum okay. quality artwork okay like put your wealth into that so the question is what is museum quality artwork right, right. so outside of skill another aspect of museum quality quality artwork is understanding one what in the world is a museum mm -hmm. and so the word museum inside of it its root is muse, right? Mm -hmm. And so a museum actually means there's a shrine to the muses. Yeah. And so if your artwork is not ultimately starting and, and, and all the way from beginning to the end, honoring the muse, then mm -hmm. you will not have museum quality artwork. All right. You might have really beautiful, like really photorealistic looking artwork. You might have an abstraction. 
but if it doesn't if it doesn't submit to the spirit right that in which initiated the idea it will not be museum quality Mm. um and so so what what an experience that we often have is when we're done with the painting you'll hear people talk about it and Mm. 80 to 90 percent of the time they will almost say word for word what this final sentence is oh like people will come up if you if you were able to go through this process and stay true to it they'll be like wow you know i don't know why but i remember when i was a little girl um there was these guys who came into our town and i remember my brothers and my dad and my uncles surrounding us you know mm. they have no idea why they're thinking that well you know <laughs> this is so awesome oh wonderful so I'll show you and one. I'm, I'm sure this year can relate to a lot of other stuff. Um, not only, uh, not only painting. Um, like my son, uh, my oldest son, or both of my my, my sons are drummers. Hmm. And um, the oldest one, this afternoon, he said to me, "Mom, I really need to get something new." Um, and I'm struggling to get something new out there. Oh, and God. yeah. Yeah, so sit down and, and and have him compose five mm-hmm. different drum beats based on these concepts. Yeah, I mean, think about like the power of that bass drum. Yeah, and then you can have that little snare. Yeah, you know that innocence, you know, and then have this beautiful relationship of, you know, uh, protecting that that thing, right? Oh, oh my gosh, you could you could write. <clears throat> it's the same spirit. It's just different. Then we ultimately express them in different mediums, you know, drum set, saxophone, paint, pencil, whatever, poetry. Yeah. But it's the muse that we have to know how to cultivate that relationship. And, um, you know, it's, it's very, it, it doesn't surprise me that almost all of the patriarchs that you read of in the, in the Bible yeah. were all artists, you know, they were either musicians, they were, yeah. um, you know, quote unquote carpenters, which were woodworkers, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. um, you had Abraham, you had Moses, you had David, you have Jesus, you have all these guys throughout there and they were all craft, you know, um, I don't want to say craft, but they were all artisans. At, Artist, you know, yeah. Artisans, you know, and so creators. they were creators. Yeah. And so to be a creator means you have to have the sensitivity to the invisible, that mm-hmm. spirit, the ideal and the intelligence to be able to organize matter in such a way that it it it, it captures the spirit of that which you're which you're imagining right yeah. and um oops in the end that is faith <laughs> you know it's oh my goodness you know it's the substance of something that i don't no one can see it i see it so clearly and then i put my effort and my work into manifesting you know yeah and it's draining it's um like you train your body. I always, my, yeah. my youngest son sometimes get a, um, he's sometimes has an issue with, with anger. Hmm. And ever since he was little, I taught him that you go to the gym and hmm. they teach you how to, to um, pump up all your muscles and you get this, all these bulging muscles, but nobody ever teaches you how to practice your inside, how hmm. to actually, um, get the muscles on the inside strengthened. And th- throughout the years, I taught him how to develop those muscles on the inside mm-hmm. when you get angered and how to, um, how to um, what's the English word for it? Um, um, druk, or to deal with it. Oh, okay. How to deal with it. Um, you know, it's, it's it, when you've got big muscles on the outside, you can pe- easily pick up something heavy. But what happens if there's emotional heaviness? Mm-hmm. Um, we have to develop those muscles to pick up emotional heaviness. So it's all the same. You've got to practice at it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I, I love that. It's, that's exactly what it is. And oh. classically, you know, in like Greek classic, um, thinking 
they used to have these things called gymnasiums where the men would go and they would work on their bodies. But at the same place, these gymnasiums weren't just for working out, but you would develop your mind, right? You would read, you would debate with each yeah. other, you do math and, and science yeah. there as well. And you also did art, music, because you mm -hmm. were developing that, that internal strength. And so yeah. the gymnasium was a place to go to develop your strength, not just your, your physique, but your, as a whole yeah. person. As a whole person. I used to have, I used to have um, like an arts and craft um, class for little ones mm. for, as a primary school kids um, years ago. And I had it in my garage. Um, we just built the house and it was new and I had a carpet and everything, um, these tables and chairs. And the kids could do whatever they want. When they were finished, you were allowed to paint your chair if you want to. Mm. Or you could paint something on the wall for me. Mm -hmm. And I always used to wear the same dress and they could paint me. <laughs> they highlighted my hair <laughs> and they painted my face and they painted my dress and they loved it. And every time the, the, the parents would come pick up these kids, I'd look like a train wreck. Um, but <laughs> they had so much fun. And, you know, some of those kids, um, I can remember the one day we had to draw a cat and mm -hmm. I only put out paint that was not related to the color of a normal cat. Mm. And they couldn't start. Some of them just couldn't start. And I had this one little boy and he was always very scared and very um, withdrawn. And the minute I got him to paint this cat with uh, blues and greens and yellows, I actually created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> And he, at school, he started doing better. Mm. Um, and it was amazing for me to see the transformation with that child. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that was so beautiful. So, um, yeah, I love that. My garage is still, still, still so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, so. Beautiful. But then, please, I really appreciate your time. Yep. I'll show you and one last thing here real quick before you go. Okay. So once you have this, now we're going to look at a painting here, okay? And very interesting, this is a, I guess, a British soldier. Mm. And he's in a, um, it looks like a, an Indian uh, canoe, right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's going through the water. Now, there are <clears throat> several things we want to see here. First of all, if we look for what we call this this dominant um, horizontal thrust, okay, this dominant horizontal movement. So once you have these ideas, you want to begin almost abstractly organizing the, this movement that ultimately becomes the under the foundation of your drawing, okay? And so if we're looking for this, this strong horizontal, we're gonna find one, um, oops, not there. We're going to find, I believe, oh, there it is, it's up here, okay? And then, when, then what we also wanna do is find this very, very strong diagonal, which is coming up through here, okay? Uh -huh. uh, one might even um, say that it's coming up through here, it's that parallel, okay? That, that thrust that's moving there. Now, where would you think the dominant vertical is? I think um, on the right side where the trees are, no? Uh, over here or over here? Well, it could be. I think if I think my first my first thought was right there where you had it now. Okay. So right here. Yeah. And it comes down and actually would end about there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now what we have is we have when we draw the language in which we use is vertical lines, horizontal, diagonal, curves, and a point. Outside mm -hmm. of that, there are no other marks that we can make. Okay. That is the alphabet for drawing. Yeah. 
All right. Okay. So <clears throat> we have our dominant vertical. We have dominant horizontal. We have this dominant diagonal thrust. Okay. So we have those first three. Um, we also have this beautiful curve coming down through here. Okay. Uh -huh. um, here it kind of gets flattened out, but here he kind of, he kind of curves it a lot more. Okay. And then we have, we squint our eyes and we look for these uh, contrasts. You know, we have this dominant contrast coming up through here. All right. Uh -huh. So what we find is though this guy is really important, almost nothing goes through him. So the mm -hmm. artist designed all these elements to be on this right-hand side of the painting. And if you notice, I'm going to erase all of this here. The story that we, we feel is we feel this coming in. We feel this thrust moving. When we look at him, we move through him, right? This uh -huh. is this man's feelings. He's this moment of peace, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you have this shooting up feeling the soul just left the body mm. and to to emphasize that if we come down here we see him but we don't see that person we just see a light sure now the the context is oh well that light is is the is the moon or the right or the sun or whatever it might be uh, but it's not yeah. it's the representation yeah. of this person's soul right yeah and and so this is, you can begin to see the concept, the idea, the story that's being told. Then it's cloaked in the context of a guy in a boat with his friend who just died. Uh -huh. And then the design leads us more on this experience like, wow, there's this, this loss and then this ascension. This is awesome. Oh. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it is beautiful. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is beautiful. Yeah, what we do as artists or get to do, um, it's ah. it's absolutely incredible. The stuff yeah. that we get to explore, examine, and then ultimately express for other people to explore and examine. It, it's, I've learned it's so cool. much. Great. Bye. I'm glad you <laughs> sure.